Hello, everybody. Welcome to AZ Cooks, the Instagram Live edition. I am Andrew Zimmern. We are going to cook together. These are inspired noodle dishes that you can make at home. And trust me, we are going to have a lot of fun doing them. This, to me, is what cooking is all about. Having fun with friends, being able to pluck things from your pantry, throw them together confidently, and make some really amazing, tremendously delicious dishes. All brought to you by the good folks at Shun, the cutlery of choice for great chefs everywhere, including this chef, uh, and Florida Kanya, the world's most earth-friendly rum, and quite darn delicious for those that enjoy those types of libations. Uh, we, we get asked to do a lot of different recipes here. We get a lot of mail in my inbox. People are always asking me about, oh, do this for Instagram Live, do that for Instagram Live. And the one that I get the most is, oh, you have some of these wonderful sort of like quick, easy Asian noodle recipes that I see you making for your kid all the time. How do you do them? So tonight I'm going to show you uh, my son's two favorite ones. And I think you're going to get uh, a lot of inspiration to make them for your family. And they are just super simple, assuming that you have a couple of things on hand. And even if you don't have everything, everything on hand, it shouldn't stop you from uh, making these easy dishes or variations of them that you can make your own. And the two things we're going to make together are a spicy peanut noodle, sesame peanut noodle, that you can make as spicy or not as spicy as you want. I don't want to you know, have everyone start yelling at me about spicy stuff. Uh, and then we're going to make a, uh, a scallion noodle uh, dish that is probably the preferred quick on the go noodle dish of Shanghai. Um, I do mine with half cooked scallions and half charred scallions because they're both cooked. But I, I infuse my oil with scallion and then I also use charred scallion in there, which really gives a tremendous depth of flavor. Um, so I guess the first thing I want to talk about is the noodles themselves. You can use anything. You can use supermarket spaghetti. I've done it before. It's delicious with either one of these sauces. I mean, trust me, once you put this peanut sauce right here on uh, thin spaghetti, your family's gonna love it. Other than that, it works on rice stick, on wheat noodle, on egg noodles, on buckwheat noodles, thin or thick, uh, even on uh, mung bean noodles or other types of noodles that may come from other countries please feel free to experiment. You may find a delicious combination uh, for yourself, as I did the other day when I had some leftover uh, rice stick noodles, thin versions of these, um, and I put it for the first time into a, a Thai soup that I make all the time, and then figured out an almost better version of a laksa, uh, Singapore-style laksa dish that, uh, that I just love to death. So. Um, I guess the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make my, uh, my charred scallion uh, noodle sauce for you, then the peanut sauce, and then we'll cook some noodles and do one cold and one hot and, uh, and enjoy some questions and some conversation time uh, together. Uh, I have uh, some uh, well, I have peanut oil in here. You can use canola oil. You can use whatever sort of oil uh, that you like. I have it warming and I've turned it up to about medium, and I'm going to throw in, uh, well, let's throw in two chilies, right? And let them toast in there. I'm gonna throw in some minced garlic. I'm gonna throw in some minced ginger. I'm gonna throw in a little brown sugar. And then I'm gonna throw in a bunch of scallions. Handful, three quarters of a cup. Whatever you care to call that. And I'm just going to swirl it around. I just want to warm those through. I don't want to put any color on anything in there. I just want to get them, well, I want the sweetness to come out in the scallions. And then I'm just going to turn it off and pull it aside. And there are some fantastic recipes just to pour this on top, you know, let it cool to room temperature and then warm it up again. And you'll really have that ginger, garlic, uh, chili flavor infused into that oil. I mean, this works really, really nice. I think we even have a, a recipe for that on our website. Um, I took a bunch of scallions and I just brushed them with a little bit of oil and threw them under the broiler. And you can see how crunchy and charry those all got. I'm just gonna put them there. 
and slide them forward. Sure, it looks a little messy, but what price deliciousness, right? We can all clean up later. And all I'm going to do is mince the charred scallions. <laughs> now, these are cooked through because once they've cooled, obviously, in that hot pan underneath there, I just want to make sure I don't lose any of that cutting board char, right? I mean, this is just fantastic stuff. Some people like to do this in a blender. I do it in a mortar and pestler with my knife because I actually want to bite down on pieces of that charred scallion. And now all those people that make a similar dish at home who are saying, oh, Andrew Zimmern, you didn't put enough scallions in the first time. Now you see that in fact, I have put plenty of scallion in. I have lots of scallion in there. And I'm just gonna give this a little stir in that now warm oil. Okay, so now we have that made. The most important thing is to taste it. Mm. Oh my God, so good. The ginger and the garlic is in the oil. I don't put soy sauce in this, some people do. So it's really important to season this. If you want to make it hotter, just crunch up one of those dried chilies when you put it in there, or maybe use some Szechuan peppercorns or some hot chili crisps, some hot chili oil or something like that. Um, I find the little pinch of brown sugar in there is absolutely necessary. It accentuates the sweetness, and then when you put the salt in there, or maybe you just wanna put a teaspoon or something of soy sauce, just enough to barely coat, then you're gonna have that balance of salt and sweet. I absolutely love it. You can put vinegar in there. Some people like to put a, a few drops of sesame oil in. I am not averse to that. The sesame oil, please be very restrained. When I say a couple drops, a couple drops goes a long way. You just want the aroma and background flavor of it. And now, with a little salt, quarter teaspoon of soy sauce and a few drops of sesame oil. Let's see if this has changed. I, by the way, this is enough for about two people. Boom. That is unbelievable. All right. Let's put that aside. Um, and you know what? Let's go ahead and cook up some noodles here. Whoa, that was a big sneeze. Um, I got a big whiff of chili. I don't know about you, but sometimes when that happens to me, I have a big sneeze. I hope I don't sneeze again. If I do, well, I do. There's no, no helping it. All right. Um, I have what some people say, oh, a fancy setup. No, I don't. I just took a big roasting pan, filled it with water. I happen to love these pasta baskets. I get them at the Asian market where they cost, I don't know, 10 bucks. I have like six of them. Uh, I can line them around a big pot. I can do individual portions of different kinds of noodles. Or I'll just drop noodles into here and use uh, my wand to pull that out. Um, either way, it it, it works for me to use these baskets when I'm doing portions, especially when I'm teaching like this, because I don't want one portion of noodles lost in a big volume of water. Now, the nice thing about this is that I also don't need to keep draining water if I'm at a, you know, if I'm cooking in a demo or for friends. One of the things that's really fun is to make new batches of noodles or fresh noodles or do them several different ways for people. And this allows me to do that really, really easily. But most importantly, let me uh, see if I can do this. It allows me to do this. It allows me to chill 
my noodles very effectively. Um, I'm just going to make some ice water here so that when some of my noodles come out, I can season them with this and have it be nice and hot. And the other ones I'm going to chill and do a cold sesame peanut noodle with that. Now, these tight little bundles of dried noodles uh, oftentimes need, I don't know, a little assistance. All I do is just use my chopsticks and just agitate them a little bit, just kind of poke at them and loosen them just so that they cook evenly, right? I mean, they're there in the water. They're going to do very, very nicely. But sometimes, you know, the ends dry together. We don't know how they're packed in the factory. So I just give them a little agitation and let that sit right there. Uh, any questions or comments or criticisms so far by you people? Um, a lot of people are asking about your apron. Jeez, you got it. Jeez Louise. God bless you, Emily. Everyone here is having seasonal allergic disorder. Um, <laughs> this is an, yet another Headley Bennett apron, but it's my favorite. Maybe you just haven't noticed it cleaned. It's been away for a couple weeks. It was at the dry cleaner. Mm -hmm. I love this apron. I love the, uh, I love the um, polka dots or whatever. Yes. All right. You're gonna break out your, um... Grateful Dead. Yes. No, that is at home. My, I did a deadly, uh, Headley Bennett now is selling, I, I have no financial relationship with Headley Bennett, um, uh, although the uh, founder and owner of the company is a very, one of my closest friends, um, but uh, they've done a collab, they did a collab with Vans for shoes, they did a collab with Sesame Street for aprons, and they've done one with the Grateful Dead, and I'm an old deadhead, so I got a deadly Bennett uh, you know, little dancing bears holding pots and pans and knives. I think it's ridiculously cool. Now, because you can get um, Headley Bennett aprons monogrammed, they'll do up to, I don't know, whatever is 12 letters. I got one of my favorite dead songs uh, put across the top of it very subtly in, uh, in red. Maybe I'll bring that on my uh, trip and cook in that uh, tomorrow night down in Atlanta. If you're in Atlanta and you haven't bought tickets for uh, my dinner benefiting Meals on Wheels, uh, you should. Uh, any other questions? Um, people are wondering what a deadhead is. Oh my God, what is, what is up with you people? The, the deadheads were people who in the 60s, after Jerry Garcia, uh, the founder of The Grateful Dead, one of the co-founders of The Grateful Dead, famously came out and said that he, they're trying to establish a community of people to exchange more than just ideas, thoughts, and feelings about the music. This deadhead community evolved and people who followed The Grateful Dead and became sort of obsessed with them the way I was for, still am, I guess, in certain ways. Um, could identify themselves, and we do so as deadheads. Mm. So, oh, that's almost perfect. Um, why is it important to taste test your noodles? Don't throw it on the ceiling. Don't break it and look at it. Taste it. Understand how long it takes to cook in the water. Understand what it is when it's underdone. Understand what it tastes like when it's overdone. You may learn uh, something along the way. Um, I am going to take these noodles and I'm going to divide them in half because I want a whole bunch of them for my cooked version. Oh, let's yeah, why not? Let's just do a little bit more uh, in there. And then ice and water. Just agitate it. And then so that I don't break them, I use the back of my chopsticks and just give that a little turn in that ice water. Just give them a little turn in that ice water. Now these have gone from boiling hot, you can't touch it, to ice cold. Now, I will tell you, those of you who saw our somen, Japanese somen noodle uh, demo during the summertime, like the Korean wheat noodles, the Japanese wheat noodles, not buckwheat, wheat noodles, 
will tighten up and become incredibly bouncy and chewy. The texture is unrivaled when they are made cold. Uh, the same thing with Korean sweet potato uh, noodles or yam noodles or agar agar noodles. Um, so it's super, super, super important that you understand the difference between the textures of hot and cold noodles. So I have these beautiful hot ones and I'm just going to put those in. Uh, like so many uh, Asian pasta recipes, we do not, where's a spoon? Uh, we do not, it would be nice, if, it'd be nice, every time I'm looking for a spoon with holes in it, I can't find it. And then when I'm looking for a spoon without holes in it, I can't find it. Um, I very rarely, if any time, make Italian pasta like this, where I just scatter the ingredients across the top, then get a little bit of that flavored oil over it. And there is a fantastic, fantastic version of our scallion noodle dish. Some people want to put a little bit of crushed Szechuan peppercorn. I know I do. Uh, go ahead and do so. Um, these ice cold noodles, we're just going to let sit there in that ice bath and get chewier and chewier and chewier while I make the sesame peanut sauce. Um, so typically with Italian pasta dishes, you want the pasta to cook in the sauce. So many Asian pasta recipes, noodles are being put in soup. Noodles are being dressed with sauce and let the sauce drip through and let you pull the noodles through. Some, yes, are mixed together. Many are. Uh, but there's a lot that aren't. And it's interesting that uh, how less persnickety uh, Chinese noodle cooks are about their noodles. I'm going to start this out with ginger that I've sliced so my immersion blender can get a little head start. I am going to uh, cut an equal amount of ginger. Ginger blooms in flavor. It gets stronger in a dish. So I just need one clove in there. Um, I am going to put a little bit of sugar in there, about, I don't know, a tablespoon. There's really no recipe for this. Uh, a squeeze of sesame oil, maybe about a quarter teaspoon. Just a little bit of Chinese vinegar. This is Chinese black vinegar, about a tablespoon and a half. I'm trying to make enough for two portions again. These are four or five dollars a bottle in your uh, grocery store. Um, I'm going to add about, I don't know, two, three tablespoons of soy sauce. This is my salt, but it's also my liquid. Some people like to put a little rice wine in there, sake, by all means, go right ahead. Uh, for heat, I'm gonna put a little bit of this uh, chili oil in there that I happen to have. It's yummy and delicious. I've got about a tablespoon that I'm gonna throw in there. You could just use Szechuan peppercorns. You could use dried or, or fresh chilies. It really doesn't matter, whatever you happen to have on hand. And then I'm going to add a tablespoon of peanut butter. I'm using an all natural one. And about the same amount or maybe a little less, and yes, I discard that fat or oil that's on the top of Chinese sesame paste. If you don't have that, tahina or tahini, whoever's labeling your products uh, will work. Or just some sesame seeds. And if you just have that oil, remember that oil is sesame seed oil, but not toasted. And it has delicious flavor. And you remember that we put in a little bit of vinegar, so the vinegar will balance the oil. Um, I'm going to dress this dish with scallion and cilantro. But I also, if I just have ugly bruised cilantro or ugly bruised scallions, I'll just throw them in. I've been known to throw a shallot in here. Um, I've been known to throw the end of a cooked carrot in there. Don't ask me why I have a single cooked carrot lying around, but trust me, I did once. And all you want to do, and you can do this in a blender. 
I'm just doing it because it's a little easier to show you with a, a stick blender, an immersion wand, whatever you want to call it. And I'm not looking necessarily to over blend. I just want to make sure all my solids, the ginger and the garlic that's in there are pureed. And you can't break it the way you would a liaise sauce. And you can't damage it by over blending. So I can feel with the edge of my immersion wand, there's still a couple pieces floating in there. So I just shake it, shake it up. That was bad, wasn't it? Abby just rolled her eyes. No, you rolled your eyes. That's fine. My kid does the same thing to me when I walk. I'm, I'm not allowed to walk next to my own child in the mall when we shop for clothes. I don't know what that means. No, you're, that's, that's true. That's very true. You pay me to walk next That's, that's exactly, well, that's the difference. He doesn't, my kid doesn't understand that in a sense I kind of pay him too. Uh, all right, so. All this stuff out of the way. I have these delicious ice cold noodles. And because they've been sitting in that ice water, the texture is bouncy and chewy. Oh, it's so good. I feel like the guys in really good ramen shops in Tokyo. They, they do these very extravagant moves. But isn't that beautiful? There is no water there. Now, once you pour this on, there's no fixing it. So taste it. That's perfect. Um, not going to lie, I made this a lot. And I just want to put enough to coat. You don't want it to be cloying. Mm. Look at those little bits of ginger and garlic that are on there. I love eating this with cilantro, little celery sticks or cucumber sticks. I love garnishing it with a little bit of scallion, especially fresh scallion. The fresh scallion has this wonderful sort of uh, bright flavor that all alliums have. You know, it's why onions just go so well with a rich bowl of chili. Um, and again, because I love Szechuan peppercorns, I want to put just a little bit of crunchy Szechuan peppercorns that I'm grinding with my fingers uh, in there. I'm going to stick this right there. And there we have the three versions of this that I have made. Um, so you may ask yourself, Andrew Zimmern, why is this one in the middle darker and thicker and this one isn't? Well, I made, again, just an inspired riff on the same dish to see how it would taste as an experiment. This has no ginger. It has no garlic. This is soy sauce and black vinegar, a little bit, and peanut butter. That's it. And I thought to myself, boy, I wonder how that would taste. I wonder if that would be delicious. I go to all the trouble of getting this stuff, but everybody has, or potentially could have, peanut butter, soy sauce, and Chinese black vinegar in their house, right? Could, couldn't think of three more shelf-stable, inexpensive ingredients. And you want to know something? Delicious. Tasty, thick, yummy. That trilogy of flavors with the scallion and the cilantro works wonders. Is it as complex or as interesting as this one is? No, but it's delicious. I, I'd eat either one of those. I really couldn't pick between them. And the reason that I can't pick between them is probably because I haven't had my charred scallion noodles uh, in a long time. So I'm going to take a little uh, bite of those and see what this is uh, how this is doing. And because the oil and the scallion 
was poured over it, all the noodles separate. They don't clump together like Italian pasta if it's left alone. Mm. Mm. I'll tell you, I miss scallion noodles so much. I make so many different kinds of noodles for my family. This one is so simple, and I am so glad that it is back in the rotation. And there's almost a citrusy punch that the Sichuan peppercorns give it that's just outrageous. So please, please, please uh, try these recipes. Try it with these ingredients. Um, sometimes if I have two or three bunches of scallions, which I frequently do if I'm... Uh, planning on cooking a lot of, or they're coming out of the garden or the farm stand, I'll buy them. I just load this up with so much scallion. It's like half scallion, half noodle, and it's delicious. But I have scallion, I have scallion in my beard, don't I? No. Hmm. Anyway, questions, comments, concerns, thoughts? What do you got? Um, how long have you been growing out your beard? Mmm. That's a great question. I think I had to shave in June for something. So here's the deal. I made this show uh, an ensemble show, an ensemble competition show for an unnamed network. And I taped it last spring. And I had my beard. They loved it. Then I went and I had to do some promotional stuff uh, for family dinner. And it had to match the season one key art, and I was cleanly shaved. So I shaved it. Then uh, I found out that I have to do some more episodes of this ensemble competition show. So I've grown the beard out again. I also, I, I kind of like it's winter in Minnesota. I want icicles in my beard when I go snowboarding and stuff. So, yeah. It's kind of like, I look like an old rabbi named Jack Frost. <laughs> <laughs> what um, else? Someone wants to know if we post these lives anywhere. We do. We post them on YouTube. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you to everyone who's pushed us way over 100,000. Um, we are doing a big YouTube push. We're doing a big Instagram push as we near a million followers. I think we're at 91 and change uh, right now, soon to pass the 90... Uh, 992,000 mark. Um, so coming up soon, get your friends to follow me on Instagram because the faster that we get uh, up towards a million, the sooner we'll put the contest up where I'm, think, I'm thinking we're going to fly someone here and I'm going to cook them a meal on IG Live. We're actually going to have you sitting here next to me uh, as our millionth winner. <laughs> Emily and Abby are saying, oh, it's not that big a thrill. It's huge. <laughs> It's massive. Where are they going to sit? Yeah, there's right nowhere to right, sit. Really, right there next to me. Yeah, okay. right in between me and the garbage can. And, really I will spot. and I will feed them. You're I will feed them. <laughs> All right. Um, what is your favorite type of food? Like, what kind of genre of food would you say is your favorite? I love seafood. And... Beyond that, it's hard for me to pick. And then when I've been binging on seafood for a week, I need a big fat steak. It really depends on what I've been eating. I would, when I was making bizarre foods, I would spend like three weeks in, in a jungle somewhere eating all kinds of crazy stuff. And then like in the airport in Nairobi, connecting through to Frankfurt, Germany to come home, I would like eat three hot dogs or five hamburgers or four slices of bad pizza. Cause I just, I would see that food in the airport. And I'd just be like, oh my God, I gotta have it. What is the best pizza topping? Well, <laughs> it's interesting that you say this. Um, I, I went to a local pizzeria the other day and I got two pizzas for myself for dinner. They were small and I couldn't decide between the two. I got a marinara pie, which was just sauce and a little bit of oregano, period, which I love. And then I got one that had spicy, uh, a, uh, a Calabrian salami, thinly shaved, buffalo mozzarella, 
and roasted pineapple. They had already roasted the pineapple, had already car caramelized, and they put it on the pizza. It was out of control good. And I, I'm really kind of hooked on that spicy meat, sweet fruit thing. Um, I, I had some cherries from cherry season that were frozen, and I, I did them with a, I did like a, a focaccia with roasted cherries, uh, Calabrian uh, sausage, uh, garlic and herbs that was just out of sight, and spicy chili uh, oil, Italian chili oil made with Calabrian chilies. That was some of the best focaccia I'd ever eaten. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I couldn't replicate it again if, if I tried. It was the temperature. It was, I overproofed it. It was really spongy. It had a lot of air in it. Yeah. Never be able to catch that uh, Quicksilver inside a bottle again. Uh, one last question. What do we got? Do you have any recommendations for places to eat in Atlanta where you're going to be this weekend? Oh my God. Are you kidding me? One of the best food uh, cities in the world. Uh, I would tell people to go down to the Chattahoochee Works, uh, which is the food hall that uh, I curated with my uh, food hall partner. Um, and in, I don't know, like a month, we're going to have an Andrew Zimmern food booth in there as well. Uh, but there's spectacular food there. Um, go up and down the Buford Highway and enjoy some of the, the best you know, Indian food in the country, some of the best Korean food in the country uh, is in Atlanta. Uh, you want to go uh, high end, there are some fantastic chefs there. Obviously, they're on all the different lists, you know, the top 30 restaurants and stuff to eat. Um, but I will tell you some of the places that I like to go. Uh, if I have one meal, I usually go to Mary Max and have fried chicken and like five side dishes of, you know, stewed okra and tomatoes and baked beans and mac and cheese and collards and a big platter of fried chicken and go bonkers. That's, that's my move. Um, you know, uh, there are so many good chefs uh, in that town. Uh, it's, really, uh, it's really impossible to choose. From the upper echelons, Atlanta has been a phenomenal food city for uh, as long as we've uh, been looking at food in this country. Great. It's more of an international city than people realize as well. When I went down there, I did an Atlanta uh, Zimmern List episode and Helen show. Uh, took me, uh, no, not Helen Cho, Margaret Cho, took me to a, um, a Korean bathhouse uh, there in the, in the episode. Um, I had no idea, not, not only how large the Korean population was or how exceptional the Korean cuisine was in that town. So if you're into Korean food, and I certainly am, seek it out. Uh, thank you so much. Next week, what are we doing? We have some cool recipe for, oh, I'm making, is, is next week uh, hot dish week? Oh my gosh, next week is hot dish week. We're gonna be making one of my family favorites, an incredible tater tot hot dish that you're gonna to wanna to see. Uh, thank you to our sponsors, Shun and uh, the folks at Florida Kanye. We appreciate you so much. Uh, thank you all. Subscribe to YouTube. Have your friends join us on Instagram and uh, follow my account. See you this week. I'm going to Atlanta Friday night for a benefit. I'm hosting Emerald's uh, charity gala Saturday night in New Orleans. Sunday, I'll be at uh, the CIA in Hyde Park. Uh, and then uh, Monday at the Children in Conflict um, fundraiser in Brooklyn. So it's uh, four cities in four days, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, and then I'm going to Las Vegas on Tuesday uh, to shoot something, I think. It's five cities in five days. It's going to be nuts. Anyway, love you all. Be kind to one another. See you next Thursday.